The school system. Some people love it, some people hate it, but regardless of your feelings on it, we could probably all certainly agree that we need it. For over a hundred years, schools have been in place to help young children prepare for life. It is in schools that we teach children how to live their lives, how to critically think, how to seek happiness, wealth, productivity and prosperity, how to build healthy relationships and to get them ready to be part of society. So what school achieves these goals? Is there a school out there that instills these values of happiness and health and prosperity in young children? And if it is, surely that would be the greatest school that ever existed, right? What problems are you seeing? This is a crisis in our country. We see type 2 diabetes. Make no mistake about it, childhood obesity is a staggering problem. Mental and physical health, mental and physical vigor go hand in hand. I tell you folks, those kids aren't getting physical education. The importance of physical fitness and the fact that it is possible Now, before we get into which school that is, I want to entertain with you just for a minute, a small thought experiment. Imagine what the world would look like today if 100 years ago, we stopped teaching mathematics and science. What would our society look like today? Well, we would have regressed back into something that resembles the stone age than what we live like today. That is exactly what has happened to one particular subject. And that subject is physical education. As time has gone on, we have moved away from having physical education as a core subject and we have changed the way we value it within our school curriculum. Throughout all of history, physical education has been an essential subject in schooling systems. Back in the 1800s in the USA, one third of school's time was taken up with physical education. Compare that to today, time devoted to physical education is based on recommendations and those recommendations at low at best. In the UK, it is recommended the students get up to two hours of PE per week. But at the end of the day, it is up to the schools to decide how much time of the curriculum they devote to physical education. And considering today that schools are highly focused on performance in the classrooms, learners getting good grades and attendance goals being met, it is no surprise that physical education is low on their list of priorities. Now, looking back at history, we can find so many examples of where physical education was a core subject in really advanced societies. 4,000 years ago, one of the most advanced societies in the world made physical education a staple of a young person's development. Even though there were war in city-states of ancient Greece at the time, both Sparta and Athens made physical education a priority for their school systems. In Athens, Physical education made up 50% of the school's curriculum, which took place in the gymnasium. Alongside intellectual pursuits, the gymnasium was a place to develop physical strength and fitness, to be a place to practice gymnastics and running, and to be a stadium for boxing and for wrestling. The same applied to Athens' rival city of Sparta. In Sparta, physical fitness and excellence was a requirement for all of its male citizens as part of its military state. From a young age, boys would be introduced into the agoge for their education, and as a result, young boys in Sparta probably spent more time developing their physical fitness and strength than their Athenian counterparts. Now, even though Athens and Sparta both had different reasons for their educational system, they were both motivated by the same concept, and that concept is arete. The concept of arete is excellence of the mind, body, and the spirit, and it's something that the Greeks highly valued as part of being a good citizen. The thing about the concept of arete is that one pillar holds the other two in place, and that is the pillar of the body. Now, many people would disagree with me at this point and say surely that the most important pillar is that of the mind. And after all, it is your brain that controls the rest of your body. Now, in many ways, you would be right. However, a healthier body is responsible for a healthier mind. The effects of exercise and fitness has on reduction of stress is well documented, but exercise and being healthier goes way beyond just being a good de-stressor. In the book Spark, John Ratti explains how exercise improves performance of the brain as well as having a positive impact on someone's mental health. Regular exercise acts like a supercharger for the brain. It improves learning ability as well as drives up attention. Spark is full of studies that proves the effects of exercise has on learning ability. In one study in 2007, 40 adults between the ages of 50 and 64 were split into two groups and asked to recite alternative uses for a random object. For example, a newspaper can be used for reading, it can wrap up fish and chips, it can line a birdcage, it can be used for arts and crafts, as well as package moving boxes. 
After reciting alternative uses for the objects, the two groups were split off. One group went off and watched a movie, while the other group went off and did some exercise, and then both groups were tested again. The movie watching group found no change in their processing speeds and cognitive flexibility, while the exercise group found they were much faster than they were before. They could think of alternatives quicker as well as come up with a lot more ideas. Now this one study adds to the wealth of knowledge that proves that exercise isn't only just good for the body, but it's massively beneficial for the brain. It's responsible for less stress, higher brain function, reduction in anxiety, better mental health, higher libido, more energy and physical vigor, and these are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the benefits of exercise. The better shape we are in, the more physical vigor we'll have to take us through our lives, and it's important to establish the value of this in society. And back in 1962, one US president and one high school from Carmichael, California tried to do exactly that. John F. Kennedy was a strong proponent of physical fitness and vigor. He knew that if you could improve the physical literacy of children, then you'd be setting up future generations for healthier lives, and your country would be better off as a result. JFK wanted more physical education in schools, and he wanted this physical education to be focused on physical fitness, and he wanted to do this with all schools across the United States. But to do this, he needed to find a program to prove that this could be done, and he found that program at La Sierra High School. Instead of games, they ran laps. They did push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, jumping jacks. They did this exercise here, which I mean, I don't know what that is, but I can't do it. They climbed the pegboard, monkey bars, climbing walls, parallel bars, and they did this every single physical education lesson, every day of the week. Now, from the outside looking in, this looks like just another regular fitness regime. But when you take a closer look at the intricate details, you start to see what separates it from being just another fitness program. It was an important lesson that the pupils were getting not just twice a week, but every single day. In PE lessons at La Sierra High School, pupils were divided into groups based on their ability and not their age. Their ability determined what color trunk they were assigned. Lower ability pupils wore white trunks. Middle ability pupils wore red trunks and blue trunks. And higher ability pupils wore navy blue or if they were incredibly fit, gold. It didn't matter if you were 13 or 16. White trunks trained together, red trunks trained together and so on. Each pupil would work their way through the trunk system if they passed certain fitness criteria, And if they lost their fitness and were no longer able to meet the criteria in a group, then they would go back down to the next group. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sounds terrible. What are you thinking? Grouping kids based on their ability. What if my kids wear in the white trunks? What's that going to do for their self-esteem? Well, I'll tell you what it's going to do for their self-esteem. It's going to work absolute wonders. It wasn't the case that the group stayed separate throughout the program. Higher ability pupils were given leadership roles and led fitness group sessions. They encouraged the lower ability pupils to improve their fitness and to pass tests to go up to the next group. The program encouraged all participants to improve themselves every single day. This isn't just a fitness program, it is a life program. It is teaching them valuable lessons that they cannot find inside of a textbook. Values that can only be learned through experience. It taught them about resilience, hard work, discipline, leadership and group cohesion, as well as boosting their self-esteem and giving them all the benefits of a happier, healthier body. Now, unfortunately, this program never took off in the United States. JFK's plan to take La Sierra program to every school in the United States sadly died with him, and there hasn't been a president since that has taken up the baton. La Sierra, however, continued the run the program until the school's closure in 1983. The story of this physical education program needs to be told and it needs to be picked up again. The real sad thing about this is that it wasn't picked up by the rest of the physical education world. Today we see a much more different model for physical education, one that focused mainly on games and on sport. Instead of Dan Laprotti's parallel bars and 12 minute fitness routines as a warm up, we now see games in a physical education lesson. Football, hockey, netball, tennis, or American football, baseball, and lacrosse. We now have Two opposing philosophies of physical education. The current play to get fit philosophy of games and sport, which is what we have today. And La Protti's get fit to play, which was the motto of the last year high school program. 
Now me personally, I am a result of the play to get fit model of physical education. It's what got me into rugby and I've enjoyed an amazing 11 year rugby career because of it. I got to play for some great teams and met amazing blokes and formed friendships that I still have to this day. I have nothing but thanks for the play to get fit philosophy of physical education. However, not everyone is as lucky as I am. The games and sports focus of the current physical education model relies heavily on skill acquisition. The issue with the current model is if you struggle with skill acquisition and you're no good at any one of the three or four sports that you play in school, then your physical education experience isn't really going to be a good one. Let's say, for example, I was born in a country where football is the main sport. Well, pfft, I'd be done for because I can't kick a ball to save my life. Literally, I sky it every time. And if you're no good at the sports that are offered to you in your school, then your enthusiasm and participation for those lessons is going to be pretty low. And your overall experience of physical education isn't going to be a good one. Like my experience in football, you'll probably be picked last for the team games. You'll probably be shoved in goal like myself and you'll just sort of stand there for the entirety of the game session. This is why it's not really uncommon to see low levels of participation in physical education lessons. How many of us when we were in school know that group of people who just sort of stood to the side and didn't really get involved or engaged in the lesson at all? And how many of us know that one person, the same one person, who always forgot their kit? Compare that to the philosophy of the get fit to play model and in my opinion I think you have yourself a much more effective physical education program. So back to the initial question at the very start of the video of what is the greatest school that ever existed? Well, in my opinion, the greatest school that will ever exist is one that implements this kind of physical education program. This is my case, my argument for adopting the La Sierra High School philosophy of physical education into the current education system. Participation. The program is mandatory. There is no option to sit on the sidelines and not take part. You can't just not turn up to a history lesson. And the same should apply to physical education. Bar an illness or injury, everyone at La Sierra took part in the program. What works even better is that the incentive model increases motivations to take part. No pupil wants to be left behind, especially when they see their mates taking part and earning their trunks. Achievement breeds motivation, and when you achieve success, you want to get more of it. When you see how happy your friend is that they have now moved up a group and the support they receive, you want to feel that experience too. So already you have increased participation in your physical education lessons and you haven't done it through sanctions or through punishments, you've done it through incentives and with a motivation factor. Next, well-being. There is a magical aspect about the power of a sense of achievement and the impact that that has on one's own self-esteem. If you've been failing at the climbing wall for weeks on end and you've been failing to do three rounds up and down and then one day after all those weeks of failure you finally nail it, you are going to get a sense of achievement in front of all of your peers who have seen you struggle for those weeks. You are going to have learned a valuable lesson that you will not get inside of the classroom and you're going to ride that wave of achievement for weeks on end. You'll have a new sense of confidence that comes with that next challenge and you'll earn respect from your peers and you'll have a newfound respect for yourself. You'll be fitter, healthier, stronger. You'll have a new sense of energy and vigor and you'll be taken that on to the next challenge in your life, whatever that may be. You will be performing better in the classroom thanks to the supercharging ability that exercise has on learning. Even though La Sierra High School is gone, there are still a handful of schools out there that follow a similar type of physical education program. And now the more than ever, I think it is time that we change up how we think about physical education. Let's move into the get fit to play philosophy. It is time to have a physical education five days a week and to focus on fitness and physical well-being. Health matters. Physical well-being matters. It underpins everything else that goes on in our lives. Schools are set up to set kids up for the future, to prepare them for life. And one aspect of life that they fail miserably at is physical and mental health and physical and mental well-being. As of 2016, over 340 million children worldwide between the ages of 5 to 19 were overweight or obese. If nothing changes, those children and teenagers will join the 1.9 billion adults worldwide who are also overweight or obese. And there is another factor that plays into this. One of the biggest killers worldwide is non-communable diseases, or NCDs. These are things like heart disease, strokes, cancers, and type 2 diabetes. 
diseases that are a result of lifestyle and environment, diseases that are preventable and that are responsible for 71% of deaths globally. That is 41 million people worldwide. NCDs come from an unhealthy lifestyle choices like tobacco use, alcohol consumption, physical inactivity and an unhealthy diet. They contribute as a massive stressor to health services across the entire globe and the worst bit about this all is that they are preventable. What is so tough about combating NCDs and the obesity issue is that even though you cannot catch heart disease or diabetes, it is very hard to see them coming. In most cases, your lifestyle or your habits are a result of your upbringing and your environment. If you were brought up by parents who are unhealthy and just don't know any better, you are going to pick up those unhealthy habits. And then you are going to pass those unhealthy habits down to your children and the cycle continues. So while NCDs aren't contagious, they certainly are hereditary. This is why a new physical education perspective is so important. Now more than ever, we need to combat obesity and NCDs. To do this as well wouldn't take much. The majority of the work's already been done. The program already exists. You can tweak it a little bit and make it more relatable to 2021 and beyond, but most of the heavy lifting has already been done. It wouldn't even cost that much either. All of the equipment used at Last Sierra High School was made by local volunteers. It would be a public health expenditure that you would actually get your money back. Fitter and healthier people are much more productive and productivity leads to wealth. More time should be focused on getting kids fitter and healthier, promoting well-being and teaching them the values of discipline, hard work and group cohesion. It is only going to better our society as a whole. Kids will perform better in the classroom, attain grades that schools can be proud of and increase attendance. Future generations will be happier, they'll be wealthier, they'll be more productive, they'll spend more time and money on improving themselves and others around them. We will be creating a better tomorrow and educating people on how to do that. And after all, isn't that the reason why schools exist in the first place? Uh, just a quick one for me, because um, the battery's running low. I found out about La Sierra High School and this particular story um, from a documentary that my mate introduced me to about a year ago um, called The Motivation Factor. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. You can watch it on YouTube. Uh, I can't remember how much it costs, but it, it ain't it ain't uh, ridiculously expensive. Um, it's a really really good documentary. It's done by a guy called Doug Orchard and um, somebody else who uh, is heavily involved is a guy called Ron Jones. Now, nearly all of the information that I got uh, for this video and all the footage I got from Ron Jones's channel uh, called The Lean Berets. So check his channel out because it's absolutely fantastic, and check out his website as well. He has got uh, just like a wealth of information when it comes to um, health and fitness, PE history and all that. So definitely check his out. Like I said, everything I got for this, I pretty much got for him. So uh, definitely check him out. All right, I'm going to see you in the next one, which hopefully won't be too long. That.